Induction heating is a simple, cost-effective heating process that delivers fast and consistent heat when compared to other conventional heating processes used for preheating and stress-relieving welds. Essentially, the part becomes its own heating element, and the highest temperature is generated and controlled in the part instead of by an external heating source, such as the flame from a propane torch or the ceramic heating element from a resistance machine. Induction heating is easy to set up. It offers a fast time to temperature, and it delivers exceptional heating efficiency, accuracy, and uniformity in the part temperature. In addition, induction offers safety benefits when compared to open flame and resistance heating methods. Since the induction process is invisible to the eye, we'll depict the basics of how it works in the following illustrations. When electrical current flows through a copper conductor, it produces a magnetic field around the conductor. The direction of the magnetic field depends on the direction of the electrical current. You can identify the direction by pointing your right thumb in the direction of the current in the conductor and curling your fingers. Your fingers are curled in the same direction as the magnetic field. The more current that flows through the conductor, the bigger and stronger the magnetic field around the conductor will be. When you switch the electrical current flow in the conductor to the opposite direction, the direction of the magnetic field also switches to the opposite direction. As you alternate the current back and forth, the magnetic field alternates in direction, growing and collapsing every time the current alternates back and forth. Next, let's explore why placing a conductive material, like metal, in the alternating magnetic field causes the material to heat up. Passing an alternating magnetic field through a conductive material generates localized electrical currents within the metal. These are called eddy currents. The bigger and stronger the magnetic field is, the more eddy currents are generated. Metal has a certain amount of electrical resistance. The circulating eddy currents flow against the metal's resistance, which causes it to heat up. This is called joule heating, and it's what generates most of the heat with induction heating. Remember, the electrical resistance of the conductive material being heated plays a significant role in the heat generated. Metals with a low resistance value, like copper and aluminum, require more eddy currents to heat than high resistance metals like carbon steels, which heat up more easily. Another contributing factor to heating in ferrous magnetic materials is hysteresis losses. This occurs due to the material's resistance to a changing magnetic field. Hysteresis losses generate less heat than joule heating, but it still significantly contributes to the total heat within the material. It's also important to note the magnetic properties of the conductive part you're heating play a significant role in the heat generated. Magnetic materials, such as carbon steel, generate more heat due to hysteresis losses. Non-magnetic parts, such as copper and aluminum, won't generate any heat due to hysteresis. Eddy currents produce heat at the part surface, under and next to the heating coil. The heating depth is determined by how fast the alternating field switches back and forth through the material. The remainder of the part thickness is heated from conduction through the part. Therefore, some soak time is needed to heat the entire thickness. It's also important to note that some heat losses occur as heat conducts to colder areas of the part, and heat also radiates into the air. When we want to heat objects, we need a strong magnetic field to generate the eddy currents. We can increase the size and strength of the magnetic field by placing multiple conductors with electrical currents flowing in the same direction next to each other. The magnetic fields combine to make a stronger field around the conductors. This is why there are multiple coil turns on induction coils. It results in bigger and stronger magnetic fields next to the material being heated. It's also important to note that when conductors are placed next to one another with currents flowing in opposite directions, the opposing magnetic fields will collapse each other and weaken or cancel out the magnetic fields altogether. When the fields collapse, they won't generate eddy currents or cause the material to heat, so we want to avoid this when setting up an induction coil.
This is also why we want to keep the positive and negative leads running from the induction power source to the material tightly together. It cancels out the magnetic fields and avoids heating anything other than the material we're trying to heat. Another factor impacting heating is how close the conductors are to the part being heated, which is known as coupling distance. The strongest magnetic field is by the conductor. Although direct contact isn't required for induction heating, the closer the conductors are to the part, the stronger the magnetic field will be, which in turn generates more heat. The farther the conductors are from the part, the weaker the magnetic field, the less heat is generated. Next, let's review the two most common styles of induction coils, solenoid and pancake. Solenoid coils are made by wrapping the conductor around a cylindrical object, such as a pipe or a vessel. The magnetic fields always make complete, oval-shaped rings through the middle and around the outside of the coil. The strongest magnetic fields are in the middle. We can manipulate the strength of the fields by the number of turns we wind on the coil, how closely we place the turns next to each other, and how far the coil turns are placed from the part. Pancake coils are made by winding the conductor flat in a spiral shape, and then placing them on one side of a surface, such as a flat plate. They can be stretched out to look something like a racetrack, and they're used to heat long lengths of plate. The magnetic fields in a pancake coil still pass through the middle of the coil and flow around the coil turns. Since the part is placed beside the coil instead of inside of it, the magnetic fields are a bit weaker than the fields inside a solenoid coil. We typically compensate for this by adding extra turns to increase the magnetic field. We can manipulate the strength of the field by how many turns we wind on the coil, how far we place the coil turns from the part, and by how closely we place the inner turns of the coil to each other. Remember, as the inner turns come close to one another, the fields begin to collapse. A conductor can be wound into multiple solenoid or multiple pancake coils if you need to heat multiple areas simultaneously.